up to this point we have looked at accounts receivable. Now let's change our focus in the chapter and review notes receivable. A note is created when a company grants credit in exchange for a formal credit instrument known as a promissory note. This written promise to pay at some date in the future typically will include interest. There are three common events that create a note receivable. One is when the company lends money to an individual or company. So you lend money, you debit notes receivable, you credit cash. When the amount of the transaction or the credit period exceeds normal limits. So a normal account receivable may be 30 days or so. Um, sometimes if we need to extend that longer, then we'll sign a written agreement, a note. And the third thing is in settlement of an existing account receivable. So sometimes a company will purchase goods and we extend them credit for say 30 days. Well, at the end of that 30 days, they know that they cannot pay or they do not have the cash flow to pay off that, that amount required. So what they'll do is they'll replace that account receivable with a note and ask, say, hey, if we can extend this, say, in 90 day period, I will sign this formal agreement to pay, plus I will give you a little bit of interest. Um, so a lot of times we'll do that for our, for our accounts receivable because we don't want to lose the account. And hopefully by extending and giving them more time, they will be able to pay in the future. And to do that, we usually charge a little interest, so we'll make some interest revenue off the transaction. As mentioned, notes typically include the interest. So when dealing with the notes receivable, there are a few things we must consider. Well, one is the principal balance. Um, also, that can be referred to as the face value of the note. That's the actual amount of the loan itself. So how much did you lend? How much in accounts receivable are you replacing? How much in sales did you have? So that's the balance due us to, to begin with. Next is the interest rate. Again, notes typically bear interest. So this is the annual rate on the note. Please keep in mind that an interest rate expressed on a note is always for a 12 month or 360 day, our book industry standard is 360 day note. So if you say it's a 10% note, that's 10% for the entire year. So if you only hold the, the note for a month, you only record interest for one month, not for the full 10%, okay? So 10% per year in that case. And then the maturity date, and when the maturity date is when will that note become due? When are they going to have to repay that note that we've given out? This information is critical in the accounting for notes receivable. So let's begin by looking at the interest on notes and learning how to figure out the maturity date. So we've got two examples here on the screen. We got um, a note that was signed uh, 80, or excuse me, we signed a note for 80,000. It was 6% 60 day note on June 15th. So this is the first note we signed. And again, it's asking us to calculate the total interest and the maturity date of these notes. I always like to start with the maturity date. So what is the maturity date of this note? Well, the way we find it, if it is a day count note, so in this case it's a 60 day note, the maturity date is calculated by just counting up the number of days. So we signed this note on June 15th. So if you think about it, June has 30 days. So you're going to take 30 days minus 15 days. So that means this note was held for 15 days in June. Well. Obviously, that doesn't quite get us to the end, so then we need to look at, well, after June, we've got July. Now, July, we know, has 31 days. So I'm going to scroll over here, and we'll put 31. So if you take that 31 and 15, that's going to bring us to a total of 46 days. Now, remember, this is a 60-day note. So we've accounted for 46 of them. So that means we still have 14 days left. So what comes after July? Well, you've got June, July, and then August and we need 14 days. So if we go in and we say, okay, 14 days in August. So 15 plus 31 plus the 14 equals the 60 day note. So this note would physically mature on August the 14th. That's when it would be due, okay? All right, so now we know how to calculate the actual maturity date. Now, how do we figure out the total interest on a note? Now, keep in mind, this is the total interest that we would pay on this note, or we would receive, excuse me, this is a receivable. So this is the total interest we would receive on this note. Well, to calculate interest, we have a little acronym I call PERT, P-R-T. PERT, or P-R-T, stands for principal of the note times the interest rate on the note times time, okay? So PRT. So in this case, if you were to take the principal, the principal is the amount we signed the note for, 80,000, 
and then we're going to multiply that by the 6%, 6% or 0 .06, and then by the number of days. Now remember, interest is expressed in annual terms, so we only pay the 6% if we hold the note for the entire year. We're only holding this note for 60 days, so we need to multiply that by 60 days out of a possible 360. Anytime you're doing interest in this class, we consider a year 12 months or 360 days. And otherwise, we normalize the months to 30 days each. So 12 months if it's month count, 360 days if you do a day count. So when you multiply that out, you take 80,000 times 0 0.06 times 60 divided by 360, and in the end, you get $800. So there would be a total of $800 in interest on this note. All right, so let's look at the next note. The next note we signed is a $15,000 note. It has an 8% interest, and it is a three-month note, and we signed that on April 29th. So again, let's start with the maturity date. Now, when it's month counts, you literally just take April. So you've got it April 29th. And remember, it's three months. So one would be May 29th, two would be June 29th, and then finally July 29th would be three. So three months out. One, two, three. So this note, since it's a month count, is physical months. It doesn't matter how many days there are. There is 29 or it was signed on April 29th, so you add one month to it, you get May 29th, add another month, June 29th, and finally that third month would be July 29th. That would be the maturity of this note. Again, let's calculate the interest. Well, remember interest is per, principal times rate times time. So we're going to take a principal balance of 15000 We're going to multiply that by 8%. Remember that's an annual term, so 8% for every 12 months in this case, but remember we didn't hold it for 12, we only held it for 3 months out of a possible 12 months. So if you multiply that out, 15,000 times 0.08 times 3 divided by 12, you get a total of $300 in interest. Alright, so hopefully now you can see how to do the maturity date if it's a day count and a maturity date if it's a month count, and you um, see how to do interest for a day count note versus a month count note. Alright, so let's look at an example of how to count for the note. We have went through, we've calculated the interest, we've calculated maturity dates, so let's figure out how to account for it. So on November 1st, Elmo Incorporated sold merchandise to account, uh, on account, excuse me, to Abbey Incorporated for 14000 in 30. In 30 is credit terms, the meaning the 14,000 is due in 30 days. On December 1st, Abby gave Elmo a 90-day 10% promissory note in settle, uh, settlement of this account. So uh, 30 days has come and gone, and Abby realized we don't have the cash flow at the moment to make this payment. So Elmo agreed to sign a note with them that allowed them 90 days, but in return they're going to pay us a 10% annual rate on those funds. So record any necessary journal entries from November 1st sale through the maturity date of the note. So let's start with November 1st. On November 1st, notice that Elmo sold merchandise on account. So that's like everything else we've done. That's a debit to accounts receivable. And again, we sold that for 14000 And then it's going to be a credit to our sales revenue because this is a sale, 14000 All right. All is well and good, and then December 1st rolls around, we didn't collect the note. However, Abby said, I need more time. I will sign this note if you will give me 90 more days, plus I'll pay you a little bit of interest. So in this case, we're doing option number three, where we did a note in settlement of an existing account receivable. So what we need to do is put the note receivable on our books for the same amount as the account, and then we need to credit or get rid of the accounts receivable. So we're actually just simply replacing the account receivable with the note receivable for 14000 Now here's where we have to be careful with notes. Notice this is a 90-day note, if memory serves me. Yes, 90-day note. It will not mature until next year. So if a note crosses a year end, we must do an adjusting entry. Where we must accrue any interest that is owed as of that point in time. So if you look at it from December, 30, or December 1st when the note was signed through December 31st, that was 30 days. 31 minus 1, so 30 days have passed on this note. 
So on December 31st, since 30 days have passed, we have to accrue 30 days worth of interest. Now remember, since this is a note receivable, this would be interest that is owed to us, so it would be interest revenue. So we would debit our interest receivable to show that, hey, in addition to the balance of the note, our customer also owes us 30 days worth of interest. And we would credit our interest revenue because it is a revenue to us when we accrue interest on these notes. Now the next question is how much? Well remember our calculation is PRT, so we're going to take the principal of the note, in this case this is a $14,000 note, we are going to multiply it by the interest rate of 10% or 0 0.10. Now, granted this is a 90 day note, but we're not worried about how many days the note will last, we're worried about how many days have passed from the inception of the note through year end. So December 1st through December 31st, we've already decided it's 30 days. So we're going to take 30 out of 360. Now when you do that, I think you get like 116 spot 67 if memory serves me correctly. So let's take that 14,000 times 10% times 30 over 360. Yes, you get 11667. Now in my case, I want you to round it to the whole dollar, so let's just say that that is 117000 It is fine to do that on a test because um, decimal places are sort of annoying. So if you round it to the whole dollar, that is okay. If you're doing your homework in the homework manager, you need to make sure you use the rounding that it tells you. If it tells you to carry it to two decimal places, keep the 116.67. But on exam, if you do round it to the whole dollar, that is perfectly fine. All right, so we've accrued 30 days. Now the next thing we need to know is when will this note mature? Now this is a 90 day note signed on December 1st, so let's go back and figure up how or our exact maturity date. So the note started in December, and remember in December we've got 31 days minus the first day, so 30 days in total. So that brings us to January. Now January has 31 days, so we're gonna go in and say 31. So 30 plus 31 brings us to 60 days, or excuse me, 61 days. Now remember we need 90 in total, so if you take 90 minus 61, you need 29 more days, so let's move to February. In a typical year, which we're always going to include, February has 28 days, so 28 days, and so if you take 30 plus 61 plus 20 day, 20, excuse me, 30 plus 31 plus 28, you get 89 days. So 89 minus uh, 90 gives us 1, so our maturity would be on March the 1st. So again, if you add those up, 30 plus 31 plus 28 plus 1, you should come up with 90 days. So this note would physically mature on March 1st. Alright, so now March 1st rolls around. Abby pays us. So Abby pays Elmo Company the amount due. So think about this. This is a note receivable. So when Abby pays us, what would we collect? That's correct. We would collect cash. Now we need to figure out how much cash. Well, again, let's go down here. To figure out the amount of cash, you're going to, one, take the principal balance, and you're going to figure out the total interest on this note. So if we take 14000 times the 10%, times the total interest calculation. Now remember this is a 90 day note, so we're going to take 90 days out of 360. So if you multiply that out, the total interest on this note comes out to be $350. Alright, so that's the total interest. You're going to take the total interest and add it to the principal of 14000 so on March 1st, Abbey Company owes us $14,350. All right. Now once we know the cash balance, we need to figure out why are we receiving cash. Well, one, it's to settle a note. And remember, we put that note on at $14,000. Abbey no longer owes us that, so we're going to remove the note at $14,000. Now, be careful here. That does not totally represent interest revenue for us because remember, this note was split between years. So the interest revenue at the end of last year, we've already recognized 117, and that is sitting in interest receivable. So make sure you get rid of any interest receivables for the note that you've accrued. And then this note, it was 117. And then last but not least, <clears throat> we only accrued 90 days worth of interest here. We need to accrue the other to um, 60 days. 
So that becomes interest revenue to us. So the additional 60 days, and that comes out to rounded $233. That's how we record the account if it is collected in cash. Now, the other possibility is that it comes back and we do not collect it and it becomes dishonored. Now, if it comes dishonored and we expect to collect it, here's what we would do. So March 1st, instead of collecting payment, we this note became a dishonored note. Abby did not pay. If a note becomes a dishonored note, we stop accruing interest on the note and we revert it to an accounts receivable. Oops, sorry, wrong line there. So if this were a dishonored note, so let me make this very clear. If it is dishonored, instead of collecting cash, you would actually revert the amount back to an account receivable. And it would go back to accounts receivable at 14350. Okay, so see the difference. If it's an honored note, if we collect the note, we debit cash. Again, I'm on the wrong line, sorry we debit cash. If it is a dishonored note, the note reverts to an accounts receivable. So when we go in here, if it's dishonored, you would debit accounts receivable. So there's two possibilities determined or depending on whether it is a collected account or a dishonored note, okay? So please watch that in your problems.